practice momentum problem with a merry-go-round. So there's a merry-go-round seen from the top. Uh, I don't know what, it's really kind of weird, a merry-go-round, if you think of the word, but that's what it is. So let's say that we have a child on the edge of the merry-go-round. Um, we can give this a radius if you want, just for fun. So let's say this is uh, three meters, the rest of three. And the child has a velocity because of the rotation of the merry-go-round that's going this way of four meters per second. So now suppose that uh, the child goes all the way around. So uh, delta theta is 360 degrees. What's the change, the magnitude of the change in momentum? Now here is something really important. We talk about vectors and we talk about magnitudes and we talk about change. You can't, you gotta take the change and then take the magnitude. So let's, let's do that. So let's draw a picture. Here's P1. P1, I'm gonna write this as a vector. So if this is the x direction, that's the y direction, then I'm gonna say P1 is gonna be equal to the mass times zero for zero, right? Four meters per second in the y direction. Uh, once around, all the way around, you'd get over to here, P2. So P2 is the same thing, M, zero, four, zero. And I'll put the numbers in just a second. So now let's do delta P. Delta P is gonna be equal to P2 minus P1. So let's do that vector subtraction. Um, I'm gonna multiply the four in here. So I get P2 is zero, uh, I guess four M zero minus zero, four M zero. And so then if I do vector subtraction with components, it's zero minus zero, zero. Four M minus four M, zero. Zero minus zero, zero. So this is zero kilogram meters per second. Now I need to take the magnitude. So the magnitude of delta P is gonna be the square root, I know this is silly, but I'm doing it anyway. Zero squared plus zero squared plus zero squared equals zero kilogram meters per second. So the change in momentum and going all the way around is zero meters, kilogram meters per second. What if the child goes halfway around? So that would be over here. That's P2. So now we just need to change our value for P2. Remember the magnitude of P1 and the magnitude of P2 are the same because the speed's the same and the mass is the same. But the change in momentum is not zero. So delta P in this case is gonna be P2 minus P1 again, but now we have a different value for P2. I guess I should write that. P2 is gonna be equal to zero, negative four M zero. It's, the child is moving in the negative Y direction. So I'm gonna get zero, four M zero minus zero, negative four M zero. And if I do that, I get zero, negative, x, yeah, negative, no, I get plus 8m0, because 4m minus negative 4m is 8m. Is that right? The change in final, I'm sorry, I got this backwards, that's why. That's negative, that's plus. So it is zero, yeah, zero minus 8m0 kilogram meters kilogram meters per second. Now I wanna find the magnitude of this, the magnitude of the change in momentum is gonna be equal to uh, the square root of zero squared plus eight, negative eight M squared plus zero squared. So I get zero eight M squared zero and I take the square root, I get eight M and that's that. Eight M and then let's put in the number. So I said eight times the mass of 40, so that's what, 3,200 kilograms meters per second, and that's the change of momentum in that case. The end.